Several new rule changes coming to Major League Baseball this season. Pitch clock, 30 seconds between batters, 20 seconds between pitches with runners on, 15 seconds between pitches with the bases empty, a maximum of two step-offs or pick attempts, disengagements, a failed third disengagement results in the runner being rewarded the next base, and shift limits, another big rule change, at least two infielders on the dirt on each side of second base, and how about bigger bases, now 18 inches square for the 2023 season. Now we bring in former Major League Baseball pitcher and current Senior Director of On-Field Operations, Dan Otero, to discuss these rules. And Dan, let's start with the biggest one, the pitch clock, something that we've seen implemented in the lower levels in the minor leagues of baseball. What kind of effect did you see it having on the pace of play in the places where it was implemented? Uh, yeah, Paul, thanks for having me on. And as you uh, said, there's a, quite a you know, there's there's some exciting changes this year coming to 2023. And, uh, yeah, the pitch timer was uh, implemented last year at the AAA level, so really just a step below the big leagues. And we really saw a huge decrease in time of game. You know, it went 25 to 27 minutes on average each game. So, you know, the teams were out of there in two and a half, 235. And as it got even to the lower levels, we were hearing from umpire supervisors that were in their beds after an hour and 45 minutes you know, of a game, because if you got a nice crisp action, you know, a 3-2 ball game, it kind of eliminated all that fluff and dead time in between pitches and in between batters. So that crisper pace of play was really huge and uh, welcomed by the fans. When you have a crisp pace of play and a crisp ball game, what kind of uh, fan interest is there in the game? And do you expect it to kind of drive the younger fan base uh, towards the game a little bit more than in previous years? Yeah, I mean, that's obviously the hope and one of the main objectives. You know, we saw that two-thirds of the fans that watched games last year in, in the minor leagues embraced it, and the more they watched it, that percentage went even higher from avid subscribers and listeners at the minor league level. And, you know, we're hoping that families that go to the game now aren't going to have to leave in the sixth or seventh inning, and they're going to be able to stay for the entirety of the game and see those, you know, crucial moments in the eighth, ninth inning, you know, especially with young kids. And, that's what we're trying to do is keep growing this game and pushing it in the right direction. We are, we're, you know, we're trying to, you know, bring in that new young fans that you're talking about. We've seen stolen base attempts across baseball dip in the last several years. By increasing the size of bases, do you expect that to have a positive effect on the number of stolen base attempts? I'm excited to see what actually happens. Um, in the minor leagues, we saw an increase in stolen bases and quite a bit more in success rate you know so i think it went from like 65 percent to 77 percent or something like that if my numbers are correct um in success rate so if that success rate goes up then major league ball clubs might be more apt and more prone to letting their base dealers take that chance and then like you said in the opening the disengagement rule could have an impact uh, impact on that as well but one thing to remember with the bigger base is yes it shortens the gap a little bit but it also shortens the throw you know, for the infielders going to first or the catcher going to second, you know, the second baseman is going to be setting up, you know, three inches shorter, just like the runner has a little bit of a gap um, shortened as well. So it goes both ways and we're trying to make it fair. And at the end of the day, it's uh, hopefully an exciting brand of baseball for the fans. And player safety is a big emphasis as well with this rule. The fact that you're not having as many close calls at first base, second base, whether it be a stolen base attempt or players' feet getting tangled up, do you feel like this could have a positive effect on player safety as well? Yeah, I think especially at first base. And as we've seen in the past couple of years, you know, some big name players have gotten hurt over at first base with collisions, whether it be the first baseman, you know, reaching for that errant throw from the shortstop or third baseman up the line towards home plate, or just, you know, that bang bang play where the play is happening at the same time as the runner's coming in. So now you give that fielder and the base runner is a little bit more space to navigate. And as we saw during that Charlotte AAA experimental game, I think Raul Ibanez gave a great demonstration of, you know, that in action. So, you know, we're hopeful that that's going to happen. And it did prove, um, it proved that in the minor leagues, you know, injuries did go down around the first base back. And finally, shift limits, having two infielders on each side of second base. What necessitated this rule and what kind of effect do you expect it to have? Um, yeah, so some of the objectives of all these rules were not just the crisper pace of play, which the pitch timer is hopefully going to you know, get at, but it's also to bring more athleticism, you know, on the field. And when we can uh, get fielders back into their playing 
maybe more standard positions that we've seen over the you know five six decades even going on the century long of baseball where your first baseman is playing first base second baseman is playing second base you know you're going to bring more athletic infielders to the forefront because they need to cover more ground and so that's one thing that we're going to try to that this rule is getting at and also to get more action you know with balls in play so if you know the left-handed hitter doesn't see five infielders on the right side he might be more you know hopeful or he might be trying to hit the ball maybe you know, up the middle more than it's seeing a guy standing right behind second base. So, you know, that's some of the objectives of these rules. And um, I mean, like I said, I'm very excited to see how this uh, 2023 and 2023 season plays out. You mentioned the positive feedback that you got from players and fans down at the minor leagues. How about the big leagues so far implementing these rules? What kind of feedback have you heard from the players and coaches on the field? Um, yeah, our group last year spent a lot of time talking with big league players um, and getting their feedback and seeing what they were going to, you know, maybe frown at, for lack of better terms. But it was a joint process. You know, the, the joint competition committee had four big, four big league players on it. And in our conversations with a lot of the guys that went up and down, whether it be AAA to the big leagues and back down, they really enjoyed the new rules. So that was very positive. And so far, our conversations with coaches and players in spring training is that they're embracing the new rules. And they know that it's what the fans want, and it's going to you know, as long as they embrace it and the umpires are on board and the FTCs are on board and the players are on board, it's going to provide a great product on the field for the fans. And that's of the utmost importance. MLB Senior Director of On-Field Operations, Dan Otero, joining us. Dan, thanks so much for your time. Absolutely, Paul. My pleasure.